Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice, where we are going to do this exercise 1E on Clark's completion and loop formulas of the axiomatic characterization part of the course. Here we have this program P, and our first task is to find its Clark's completion. And for this, I have here prepared everything and the, here, this is the copy of the program. So let's start with the Clark's completion. So for A, we just have this rule. So then all we have to do is to replace, is to write this rule A, if and only if the, okay, let me move this here. A, if and only if D and not F. Now for the B, we also have just one rule, so we will have B if and only if not E and not F. For the C, whoops, there's no C. Then we just write C if and only if false, which is the same as saying C is false. Now let's do the D, then D if and only if G and not C. Now we have here the E, then same story, E, if and only if, A and H. Then something more interesting for the F we have to, so then we will have that F is true, if and only if either B and not D is true, are, are true, or C and not H are true. This was the F, now comes the G, for the G we just have a fact, then we can write G if and only if true, which is the same as saying G is true. And now for D we have these two rules, and we can write this here at the bottom, H if and only if D and not A, or B and not B. Good, so this finishes the part on the completion, and now we have to find the positive dependency graph, the loops, and the loop formulas. Okay, let's start with the graph. So here this tells us there's a link from D to A. There's another link from A to E. And from the H, we also go to the E. Now these are just negative literals, so here we have the B goes to the F, and we don't have any of them here, so let's just put here the B that goes to the F here. Now we have the D goes to the H, and we have this H there, and here G goes to D, C goes to F, and E goes to H. Then we just have to put this S there. Okay, nice. And now let's check whether this was correct. One way we can see that um, there should be for this one edge, two edges, three edges, four edges, five edges, six edges, seven, and eight. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. So this is an, a test that you can do to see that, that the graph corresponds to what it should be. And let's just write here the, the graph definition using mathematical notation. So we have, oops, we have, the set of atoms A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And the edges are D, A, A, E, H, E, B, F, D, H, G, D, 
cf and eh good and as before that we got hand, we had counted eight and eight here we see there are also eight elements which is what makes sense good now let's look for the loops so here let's look first for the for the single loops there's no loop from any node to itself right so there's no uh, loops of a single atom then with two atoms we just have this from the E, we can go to the H and vice versa, right? So we can write here, let me copy this a bit below. We can just say we have E and H. And now, so from the D, so from the D, something we can look now is from the G, there are no incoming edges, so it cannot be in any loop, right? If there are no incoming edges, there cannot be any path that leaves the node and gets back to it, right? So from D, the only incoming edge comes from the, from the G here, so then there can't be a loop because there would be no way to get back here, right? Then similarly for the E, and then we have this here, and of course it's clear on this side that there's no loop. Then these are, this is the unique loop of the program, and now we write here the loop formula. So let's have a look here at the rules for E and for H at these ones, and discuss the H and discuss the E. Then if either E or H holds, then D and not A must hold. And putting it another way, if D and not A do not hold, if this does, doesn't hold, then E and H must be false because the other way of having them is using them, right? We can only prove them if we had them before, right? Because we have E, H, H, E. If this body, if the body here doesn't hold, then there is no way we can prove E or H, because for proving each of them, we need the other. But the other rule that we could give it, we are saying that it, uh, we are saying that in this case, it doesn't hold. So then there would be no way of proving that. Good. Let's move on. And now let's look for the models of the completion, right? So we have done this part. So now we need to look for the models of the completion and then for the stable models. Okay, so let's start with this search. Let's change to red here. Then good, this rule is telling us that G must be true, and this one is telling us that C must be false. So this we get here easily right at the beginning. Let me move this a bit above to make some space. Now with G and not C, I can get the D, right? And what else? So now I have here, let's, let's look at where do these uh, atoms appear. So here, for example, I have not D. So for the F, I have not D in the body, but so this conjunction doesn't hold because it says not D, but I have the D. And this doesn't hold either, right? Because it says C, but I have not C then F must be false. Then F must be false, so then this is satisfied, but we don't know anything about the E. And here we have not F, and we have D, hence we should have the A. And now with this A, we can say that's there, that here in this rule, the A holds, but we don't know the value of the H or of the E, right? So we cannot deduce the value of the other. Then if we come to here, we can say that this doesn't hold because we have the A. And now about the H, the E, and the B, we know nothing, right? So we know about all the others except H, E, and B. And that's why we also have the equivalence about H, E, and B.
right? And this has the A has the A, the B has the E, and the H has this one. So then we cannot derive anything else from here. But just also for doing later the test, what we see is that just having this assignment, we are sure that this, 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 and this equivalents are satisfied, right? Here, A is true, and then this is also true, D and not F. Here, F is false, and both these are false because we have not D and D, and C and not C. This equivalence is satisfied because we have the D, and we have G and not C, and this is, and for this we have G true, and for this we have C false, right? So then, now we are going to extend this assignment, and we, to check that this extension is correct, we will just have to, to consider this one, two, and three rules, right? So let me add them here. Yes, these blue dots, so that I remember. Good, then uh, let's change color and switch to gray, for example. So now we cannot uh, deduce anything else easily, at least. So then we can reason by cases. At this point, we know that every model of the completion must have this atom. But we don't know anything, we don't know much more about the E, the H, <coughs> and the B. So let's reason by cases and let's start, for example, with the B. And look here for models of the comp supported models or models of the complete without the B or with the B. Now, what happens in this case if B does not belong to the, to the supported model? Then, here we don't have the B, and then we should have E true, right? Because if we have E false, then the equivalence doesn't hold. And if we have the E, then from here we have E and not B, then we should have the H, right? So then this part of the equivalence is true, this part of the equivalence is also true, so the equivalence is satisfied. Then here B is false, and here, this is also false because we have no T, while well, here there's the E. And this one, we have true for the E, and we have A and H also true, right? So then these three equivalents are satisfied by these supported models, and the others, we had already checked them before, that they were satisfied by this part of the, of the assignment. So then we know that this corresponds to a supported model. And now let's go and have a look at, at the other side. Let me first clean what I painted in, in gray here. So now we have B, we are looking for supported models that contain the atom B. Then this conjunct doesn't hold, so H has to be false. And what else? So now if H is false, this doesn't hold, so the E has to be also false. And then things should work well here because we have B and we have not E and not F, right? So then this gives us another supported model. And just for doing one more, one more check here, this part of the implication is false. And this is also false because we have the A. And this is also false because we have not E, right? Then with this one, this part of the equivalence, not implication, this part of the equivalence is true. And this part is also true because we have not T and not F, right? So then the equivalence holds because both parts have the same value, the same truth value. And here, A and H, sorry, A and H is false, and the E is also false, hence the equivalence is satisfied. Good. Then these are the two supported models. Let's just write them down here. So we have A, D, E, G, and H. So this is this one. No, A, I wanted just to write it in the alphabetical order. That's why it took me a bit to get them. And... Uh, then on the other side we have a comma b comma d and g. Okay, so these are the supported models. And now what we know is that the stable models are the supported models 
that satisfy the loop formulas of the program. So then we just have to check whether this satisfies this loop formula and this satisfies this loop formula. So for this, this is telling us if we have E or H, and this is the case because we have it, then we should have D and not A. D we have, but we do not have not A. So then the supported model does not satisfy this loop formula, hence it's not a stable model. Right now, if we come to look at it in the program, what happens is that given that we have a, right? So let's see. Let let's see. This was about e and h. So for e and h, and this is the example that I just commented at the beginning, right? Given that we have the a, this body is not satisfied, so we cannot get the h from here. Then the only way of getting this. E and H that appear here are by these two rules, but those two rules use them. Hence, we cannot really uh, use them for proving uh, any of them, right? Because what the, you want to prove, you have to use it. So then they cannot belong to a stable model. Good. And then what, what's up with this? So here it says if E or H and E or H do not belong here, so then the supported model satisfies the loop formula and therefore it's a stable model. In fact, this is the unique stable model. Okay, nice. So then this concludes the exercise. I hope you like it and you have understood it. So then, see you in another video. Ciao!